Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Peter has a question about using puts. Why use puts to sell rather than calls to sell? Uh, right, uh, Mike? There's no real – we were basically showing both. I mean, yeah, one is – Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, one of them is bullish, one of them is bearish. Just we don't want to uh, necessarily give a recommendation. If you want my views on the, on, the, on the currencies, feel free to contact me at the information on the screen, and I'll be more than happy to go over it with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, as it relates to your needs. Uh, but if you are bearish on the dollar, because these are all, all the ISC options are dollar-based, then you buy put options. If you're bullish on the dollar, then you buy call options, so to speak. So that's, uh, we just wanted to kind of show a little bit of both. Right. Uh, Claude wants to know if you have a Skype number. Do you, Mike? Uh, I do not have a Skype number, actually. So I kind of, may, actually, maybe I, by, he's probably in Europe, I assume. Um, maybe he can contact you by email and you could find a convenient way to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. Send me an email, Claude. I'll be more than happy to uh, do whatever I can for you. But just to reemphasize, I'm not a registered rep in Europe, so I'm not able to do business with you. But there's no law against talking, I guess. <laughs> right, and may he, he might be here. I don't know. Uh, who knows where you know, he might be in the U.S. or maybe, I don't know. Um, what else? Um, Mike? What, as far as hedging, so if, a, if, if an entity has, um, they're in, let's say, the U.S. and they're, they're doing business in Canada, you'd be able to hedge their accounts receivable if they're worried about the currency exposure? Is that something you could do? Absolutely. Like, let's say, for example, that um, let's say that you uh, sell waders. Waders are the, those long pants that you wear when you go fishing and you're in the U.S., and let's say that you get a lot of business from Canada because people in Canada fish a lot, let's say. And you have all these waders that you're looking to sell to Canada. One thing that we could do would be to, and let's just say, and I'm just making up a number right here for case of simple math. Let's say, for example, that you have, um, and let's actually bring up, oh, I lost. You know what, let, let's, let's send them all to Europe, actually. We're going to send our waiters to Europe. Sorry for the bad yes. example, but, I, but, I, yeah. but I'm using it because we, we have the euro price fresh in our minds. The euro, is the EUI was trading at 70 approximately. And right. let's say you have $7,000 worth of waiters. And you're concerned that between now and the day that you're going to sell all those waiters because you have a big order coming in for $7,000 in another month and a half, you're concerned that the value of the U.S. dollar is going to tank against the euro. Well, if that's the case, the simple solution to it would be to buy an option to hedge that. So that way, if the U.S. dollar tanks, then you can buy a put option on EUI, and that's just a simple way of doing insurance. Now, and you can buy it for a month and a half out. And basically what you're doing is you're buying price insurance to hedge any currency risk that you have. Now, let's say that you want to get a little more complex. Obviously, you can do that when you're taking into account volatility risk, premium risk, and that type of thing. Uh, that, those are ways with which we hedge people and help people along those lines. Fascinating, Mike. I mean, you know what it is? That's great. shows you that there are, you know, there's a business reason for these options. And, again, whether it's last year's 38% uh, decline, at least in, you know, the U.S., but uh, – I remember when the market was down 38% and you were an American citizen and you had your money invested in, let's say, the U.K., when the pound weakened so much, if you had sold uh, at that point when the pound was so much weaker, you, you probably would have lost a lot more than 38% because your money was denominated in pounds. You had an investment that may, might have been down 40%, but the currency was down even more. So you might have lost 50% last year. Uh, you could have probably helped that investor, correct? Yeah, and that's something that we focus on. It's uh, currency risk is very real, folks. And uh, you know, Steve and I have done webinars on this in the past, uh, just how the currency can affect the price of oil. It affects everything in your life. 
uh, in a lot of ways with which you may or may not see, and currency risk is very real. And we respect that currency risk with all of our clients' portfolios. If you don't mind me adding, Mike, I had a great question last week. I did a live seminar, and somebody said to me, one of the attendees, they said, you know, Steve, which uh, of the Greek uh, gauges, I call them risk gauges, but which gauge should I worry about? And I said, it's like looking at your car. Well, it just depends. If your oil light's on, then you know you got a problem and you, you should pull over, you know, meaning that maybe it's your gamma. If you have a tremendous amount of gamma at one point, you should worry about that. If you're buying all in the money options and not hedging them at all, then you have to worry about your delta risk. If you're buying short dated options with a week to go, um, you have to worry about your theta risk. If you're buying long dated options, you have to worry about your vega risk because yeah, you have a, a, an option that's not going to decay very quickly, but it has a lot of volatility risk. So each option has its own risk. And, and I, Mike at Know Your Options can actually help you figure out in your portfolio, you, know, you probably you might have too much risk in one area, uh, and Mike may be able to reduce that. Correct, Mike? Absolutely. And you know, we, we don't like to think of it so much as reducing risk, more like shifting risk uh, from mm -hmm. the standpoint that there's a good thing and a bad thing with every trade. And uh, to kind of add to your question on the Greeks, I think gamma is overlooked a lot of times in calendars and diagonals from people just because, and, and like you said, all, everything's important, but a lot of times people say, oh, I'm just going to sell the near-term option, and because I'm selling the near-term option, I am taking advantage of time decay. I'm such a smart person. Not so fast. You still have that gamma risk. Because as that underlying, as EUI, as YUK, BPX, the Swiss franc, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, or whatever other currency you're looking to trade, as that gets closer to that short strike price, you have all that gamma that's working against you, meaning the delta increases, but it's increasing against you. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.